G'day, Blade Dickheads, Vaping Bogan, back again for another Ridgy Didge review. Hope you're all doing tip fucking top. Got another side-by-side -side mod to have a look at. Haven't had one for a little while, but I remember last year we had quite a few popping up. This one's from Steam Crave. It's another one in their Hadron line of mods. This one they've called the Hadron Light. It's a single 21700 100 watt mod. It's got a little uh, detonator style fire button up on the top there and accepts a 25 millimeter atomizer. I've got something a little smaller than that on there at the moment, little MTL tank from uh, YDDZ called the Dispersion. Been really liking this little combo. Suits a, uh, a tall RTA. It's got a simple little chip, but it does do all of the basics you would expect. Temp control, it's got a voltage mode, things like that. I'm uh, currently running it with this uh, MTL build at uh, 18 watts, 0.7 ohm coil. Perfect for your MTL RTAs or single coil RTAs, anything you're going to vape at 10 to 60, 70 watts. Obviously it does do 100, but uh, single battery, you're probably looking at uh, a little bit lower than that if you want to get a day's vaping out of it. We'll go through all the bits and pieces shortly, but before we can do that, yeah, we've got to have a fucking beer. Got an interesting beer today. This one is from Filter Brewing. It's a Caribbean stout. This one is a tropical stout, but if you're expecting something exotically fruity, you'll be surprised. The style is all about using lager yeast, and the result is a full-bodied silky stout. Chocolate and coffee flavors are topped off by rum and raisin notes for a smooth finish with a sweet black note. Jamaica stout, you ask? We sure did. <laughs> a little fucking pun there. Jamaica stout. Uh, Jamaica stout. You get it? <laughs> anyway, love a fucking good pun. Uh, this one is coming in at fucking 7% and filter, spelt P H I L T, filter, uh, is brewing up in, uh, where are they? Fucking Australia somewhere. Fucking doesn't bloody say, it just says Australia. Anyway, let's just see how she fucking tastes. Let's drink a beer. Let's drink Oh yeah, give it a bit of an aggressive pour, get some of that uh, frothy head going. Smells good, it's got a few of those sort of caramel notes, but I can definitely get a bit of a, a rum sort of uh, aroma there. A fucking cheers. That's not bad. That's pretty tasty. It's definitely a bit thinner than some stouts. It's not a real thick, in-your-face kind of uh, meal stout, but it has those uh, coffee and chocolate flavours for sure. And then there is, uh, yeah, a little bit of a kind of rummy uh, raisin flavour. Yeah, a little bit of a kind of Christmas cake. Yeah, now I'm starting to get some of that. Yeah, the sultanas and raisin sort of flavours, a little bit of that kind of barrel-aged rum sort of feel. As I said, not a super heavy stout, quite nice and easy drinking. You could smash a few of these without getting overwhelmed. And it has that uh, lovely malty, bready kind of lager base to it as well. It's a, it's a real nice sort of um, woody, fucking uh, nice cool weather beer. Anyway, dickheads, let's pair it up with a liquid. Well, since we've got rum and raisin in our beer, why not go for one of my favourite fucking tobacco? Tobacco flavors. This one's from the Vaping Fossil when they're naturally extracted tobacco line. It is a rum and raisin flavor. You can't have seen me feature this one a fuck ton because I absolutely love it. It is my sort of go-to tobacco flavor these days. It's got those really nice sort of woody tobacco flavors, kind of the taste of the smell of fresh pouch tobacco. It reminds me a lot of the smell of uh, Port Royal rum and red wine. The uh, the raisin flavors, the uh, sort of molasses-y sort of flavors mixed with that tobacco just goes fucking perfectly with any sort of dark beer and so I'm expecting uh, good things with this little pairing. Oh, that's beautiful. That is really fucking nice. Yeah, that two sort of uh, rummy flavours mixing nicely together and the chocolate and coffee just goes super nicely with the tobacco elements of the liquid. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, woody, rummy, Got some sort of barrel flavours coming off both the uh, liquid and the fucking beer and the uh, the chocolate and coffee. Well, that always goes nicely together with the uh, the savoury notes of a tobacco liquid. Not disappointed at all in either of those two, but enough waffling over the malts. Let's get down the up and bloody close. We'll have a good squiz at this uh, mod. It does come in a kit with the uh, Supreme V3 RTA, which I've already reviewed about a year or so ago. So I'll put a link in the description to that tank if you want to see my thoughts on it. But uh, we're really going to focus just on the mod today because it is available by itself as well as in the kit. Anyway, let's get down there and have a sticky beak. 
Oh, fucking righty then. So this is the packaging. Your Hadron Light comes in. As I said, mine came as the combo with the uh, Supreme V3, but uh, you can just get the mod on its own, which is what we're going to kind of look at today. But standard sort of packaging from Steam Crave. Let's see what you get inside. Well, you got the mod, 18650 battery adapter, USB-C charging cable, two 21700 battery wraps, a user manual, bag of spare screws, Steam Crave sticker, and then two 510 platform protectors in a couple of different sizes. But let's get into it. So it comes in two different colors. This is the gun metal. There's also a black version, very nice sort of uh, finish to it. It's a zinc alloy body according to the uh, website. So uh, it's got a bit of heft to it, a bit of weight to it because uh, zinc alloys are a little heavier than your aluminium and things like that. But uh, it's not too bad for a uh, 21700. You've got a stainless steel 510 platform up here. Now that'll uh, allow you to put up to about a 25 millimeter atomizer. The Supreme V3 fits on here nicely and uh, other 25 millimeter addies have as well. But uh, yeah, you can't go any bigger than 25. You've got a uh, detonator style fire button up on the, the top of the battery section. It's got a bit of an angle to it, so it's quite comfortable in your hand to fire it with your thumb. I mean, you could fire it like that if you wanted to, but I've been uh, naturally holding it like this and firing it with the old thumb. I like the angled shape to it. It certainly makes it um, much more comfortable. You don't have to kind of reach around the top. It's, um, it's very ergonomic to just hold it like so. You've got a uh, bit of branding on each side. You've got Steam Crave over here, a little bit of a sort of shape to it. And on the other, you've got Hadron Light. But apart from that, it's very nice and clean. It's got a, a nice look to it. I think they've done a good job on the uh, design. You've got your screen over this side, just covered by a little bit of a, a black acrylic. You've got a USB-C charging port down the bottom here. And with single battery mods, you can use that onboard charging. With dual battery devices, I always say take the battery out, put it in a charge and do it properly. But with single battery, onboard charging is just fine. You don't have to worry about shit getting unbalanced. Down on the bottom, you've got your positive and your negative buttons. And then you've got your battery cap. I think this is a, a stainless steel plate down here, kind of matches nicely with the 510 area. And you've got some vent holes in that cap and you just unscrew it. Threads are all really nicely done. You can just thread it out with the tip of your finger and uh, drop your battery in. It's got a little uh, marking down there in there to tell you that it's positive end first. You can't really see it on camera, but uh, there is a marking in there to tell you which end your battery goes in. So I've got a Molly Cell 21700 here with a nice little uh, unicorn ODB wrap on it. We'll just drop that in and uh, secure it with our cap. Nice snug fit. You don't have to worry about battery rattle with the um, telescopic cap system. I've had no issues taking batteries in and out and I've been doing it quite a lot. I have been using this mod quite a fucking bit. So let's have a look at the menu system. Now, one thing that does annoy me a little bit about this is the screen is kind of orientated for a left-hander. You've got your buttons over here on the left and you've got positive down the bottom, negative up the top, which is kind of odd. So if I adjust things, well, I need to unlock it. So you hold down the fire button and the uh, negative key and it will unlock it. But if you're using it in its sort of default mode, you're going to be using your left hand here and negative is the top button, which it's just not really natural. Positive being the bottom button here, it's, it's weird. Um, so it defaults to this mode when you take the battery in and out. If you hold down positive and negative for a few seconds, it will flip the screen around to what I think should be the default mode, which is right-handed for starters because only 10% of people are fucking left-handed. But also it makes a lot more sense now because the positive button is up the top and the negative button is underneath, you know, up to increase your power, down to decrease your power. That would just make a lot more sense to me. So it's a little annoying that every time I change the battery out, I've got to hit positive and negative and flip the screen around to, um, to orientate it the way I want it. It did remember that I'd locked the positive and negative buttons, but it can't seem to remember that I flipped the screen, which is a little fucking dumb, but not a big deal. As I said, hold down those two buttons and it flips the screen around the way you want it. Now I might just 
just uh, adjust the camera settings so you can see the screen a little clearer. There we go. All right, so you've got sort of a classic screen layout on here. You've got your resistance up the top there. Underneath that is a puff counter. As you can see, I've put uh, quite a few puffs through it, and I think I have reset it by accident a couple of times. So I'll probably put closer to 3,000 puffs or more on this thing. You've got your battery indicator on the far left there. You've got your wattage in the middle here. You've got the applied voltage top right and the seconds of your last vape underneath that. It is in one watt increments, which I do like, down to five watts and all the way up to a hundred. So none of that 0.1 watt bullshit. I like the, uh, the, the one watt increments. So to flick through the different modes, you give it three clicks at the fire button. One, two, three. And now we're into voltage mode. It is in 0.1 volt increments, which is good because volts are a lot more powerful than watts. Uh, it's got an output voltage up to 8 volts, so you uh, do have a boosted uh, chip there, which is great if you want to use voltage mode. You've also got temp control, three more clicks, and we're into stainless steel temp control mode. Now, temp control is somewhat limited in that you don't have any control over output wattage. It's just going to give you, I guess, an automatic sensing of your temperature and apply whatever uh, wattage it thinks you need. But you do have uh, three modes. You've got stainless steel, you've got nickel, and you've got titanium. And then you have a bypass mode, which is going to run it similar to what a mech mod does and give you the raw voltage that's left in your battery. So at the moment, my battery has 4.1 volts, and that's what it's going to deliver um, similar to a mech mod. And then as your battery drains, it will reduce how much voltage it can output. And then we're back to wattage. So uh, pretty fucking simple in the uh, system. I said a little bit limited in temp control mode, but you do have voltage there and you do have bypass, which are handy for some people. If you uh, hold down the fire button and the positive, you can uh, clear the puffs. If you hold down the fire button and the negative, it will allow you to lock both positive and negative, but still allow you to fire the device, which is quite handy because the way I hold it often is with my little finger underneath the mod and uh, I found myself accidentally adjusting wattages. Um, so having the ability to lock those buttons was quite fucking handy. But that is about it really for the uh, firmware. It's uh, very simple. That's what she looks like with that dispersion tank on there. As I said, the uh, distance here is uh, reasonably long. So it suits a fairly tall RTA. Your shorter tanks, you might find your drip tips getting kind of close to your fire button or it looks really good and works really well with the supreme v3 tank from steam crave also quite a nice tall tank and so uh, the drip tips well out of the way of your fire button but uh, a nice little combo if you do want to get that tank with it or uh, if you've got one of your own i said they're also available separately so that about fucking does a stickhead so let's jump back up top talk pros cons prices and everything fucking else so there you go, cunts. The Hadron Light. A nice job from uh, Steam Crave. Love a side-by-side -side mod and love a, uh, a detonator firing button. That's a sort of style that I've always enjoyed. But let's talk about the pros and cons. What did I think was good? What did I think they kind of fucked up? Well, love the size, love the shape, love the uh, the form factor. Side-by-sides are always nice. They kind of sink your tank down nice and low, give you a nice sort of pocket-friendly kind of form factor. So that's always a fucking pro ski. As I said, love that button. It's a good position for it. I like that they put it on a bit of an angle. It's just way more ergonomic than some other sort of detonator styles that we've seen. It's got a, uh, a decent build quality to it. All of the, uh, the seams are very nice and uh, it's well threaded, bottom cap, no issues. As I said, I've been running this thing quite a bit, probably testing this more than uh, some other devices. And um, that's probably just because this little combo worked out really nice. I've been enjoying this tank. So uh, yeah, I put, I think maybe 3000 plus puffs through this, um, changed batteries a load of times and I've had no issues with the cap or anything. So uh, yeah, build quality, definitely a fucking thumbs up. Performance, well, it does exactly what I need it to do, and that is wattage. It's got voltage mode in there, which is also a nice feature. Bypass for those that do want to use it. Temp control, well, it's got it. Maybe not as good as some others out there, uh, but does have that in there. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to give them a tick for the uh, the firmware. It's a decent little chip, easy to navigate. I never really had to look at the instruction manuals on how to uh, use it. Just figured it out, and it's um, very sort of standard compared to a lot of other products that we've had and works well. USB-C. 
Always a fucking tick. It's pretty standard these days, but uh, always nice that you've got it. And 21700, always a fucking tick. Not heaps of 21700 side by sides. A lot of the 18650s and things like that. So a bit of extra battery life with that. And uh, yeah, plenty when you're using a, an MTL tank like this. So what could I fucking complain about? What are the cons? Don't really have a lot here to whinge about. Main thing that I've noticed is a little bit of button rattle from the firing button. That might just be mine, it may not be all of them, but yeah, can kind of hear that little uh, little tinkle when uh, I, yeah, I move it. So it would have been nice if that was a little bit more sort of uh, shored up. But apart from that, the only other thing I could say is the, um, the, the odd choice of screen orientation. It seems like it should be defaulted, I think, for a right-handed use, have the positive button above the negative button. It would just be a little bit more kind of natural, uh, but instead it orientates this way and then you've got to hold positive, negative, flip the screen around. Once you do that, it's all good. So it's an easy fix, but it is kind of annoying that uh, I can lock the positive and negative buttons, take the battery out, put a fresh one in, and it remembers that it's locked, but it doesn't remember that I flipped the screen and I've got to flip the screen back every time I change the, uh, the battery. It's a nitpicky thing, it's a little thing, but hey, it does annoy me just a little bit. But as I said, not a fucking deal breaker not a big deal. So uh, that's about it in terms of uh, cons. Overall, I think they've done a really good job and nice to have uh, another side-by-side -side option. So what are they going to fucking set you back? As always, I can't put links in the description, so don't bloody ask me, which fucking website can I get this from? Where can I get it in fucking Indonesia? I don't know. Use your fucking Google Foo skills. I did, and I can see it on a bunch of places. Uh, you can pick them up uh, in the US for uh, $58. And uh, yeah, $58 US for just the mod um, from a very popular website most of you would know <coughs> element vaping um and uh, that's a decent price, I think, for the mod, 58 bucks. Very, very affordable. Uh, with the uh, tank, the uh, Supreme V3, which is a really decent uh, single coil RTA, uh, you can get that, comes with two decks, that tank as well, for about 85 bucks, 86 bucks, depending on where you get it, US, which is, uh, again, a very decent deal for tank and mod, and uh, a nice tank at that. So, uh, yeah, price, I don't think you can really argue with them. It's uh, a very good value for um, a pretty decent little mod. So uh, that about fucking does me, dickheads. Another Hadron and a slightly more compact option in their line, but um, that's about all I got to fucking say, so I'm going to bugger off. But I'll put the usual Instagram and Facebook links down in the description if you want to see what this fucker gets up to outside the YouTube videos. If you want to support my channel, please do. Hit the like, hit the subscribe button, share the video around. It always helps me these days with that YouTube age restricting all of our content. But if you really want to keep me behind the lens, then think about hitting some of my support links. As I say every video, this is an independent channel, which means I don't get paid to make reviews, I don't do sponsorships, I don't do that sneaky jumping the queue fee thing. I want to make sure you're getting a truly unbiased opinion on the shit I'm talking about. But to keep that up, a bit of public support is how I pay the bills. So hit my Patreon page, a special content, do a vlog on there once a week you won't see here on YouTube, as well as access to my little Patreon community. We hang out in the uh, Facebook group and the Zoom room. You can ask me dumb questions and have a beer. And those fuckers keep me doing my thing. So bloody cheers. But if you can't, that's all good. Sit back, sub me fucking dicks off, all your bloody tits off. I couldn't give a shit what it is you vape it on, whether it's a side-by-side, -side, a standard mod, a fucking pod. As long as you're not banging the bloody bungers, that's all that matters. Cheers for tuning in. Cheery fucking oh. G'day, lady kids. G'day, lady kids. And back again for another dinky dire. Fuck me. It's another one in their Hadron line. They've called this one the Hadron Light. It's a. Is that a hair on there?